guess what kind of camera I use for this photo? A, a mobile phone, B, a point and shoot camera, and C, a high end camera. So if you want to know the answer, keep watching and you'll find out. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Engine's Play. So today I'd like to show you guys how lighting is a big factor in taking photos for your collectibles. Maybe using a small camera or your mobile phone or those high-end mirrorless or DSLRs. So this is very important, like for example, when you try to do either doing a photography or deciding to buy a pre-order of these such collectibles and checking out if the, uh, this, the photo is good enough for you. So before we start, click the thumbs up if you like the video and help me share with everyone. And I also noticed that 80% of my viewers are non-subscribers. So kindly also click the subscribe button to help my channel grow as well. Before we go into details, there's two things that you need to know. The kind of camera that I use, uh, the first one is a mobile phone. It's an iPhone 10. Uh, the point and shoot is a Canon G7X. I forgot what mark, I think the latest one, Mark 3 or something. And the third one is my Canon EOS R5. And as for the lighting, there's three setups as well. Um, there is the sunlight, but not direct sunlight. So I just brought it in the living room. So there's no direct sunlight just to diffuse it. So that's the first lighting setup. The second, and then no other lights as well. The second uh, is the ambient light, which is the lights in the collection room. And the third one is I having my LED lights uh, to the piece. I properly lit it. Uh, I think f uh, key light and also some backlights just to showcase the, the details. So those are the three lighting setups as well. The subject for this experiment is the XM Studios cable. Why I chose this because uh, the cable has this very good details uh, like the arm, um, the, the guns uh, and also some texture in his suit. Uh, but it also has this very, uh, not super dull, but like a, a pastel color um, of his suit. So it's not like the sideshow colors where it's really bright. This one is like undertoned. Um, and I would really like to emphasize that because the lighting has an effect on that one as well. So that's why I choose the XM cable because it has both the, a different kind of tone. Uh, which is not too bright and also has the enough details that actually with the correct lighting it emphasizes those details. Let's start with the daylight. Uh, the daylight setup I brought the piece the cable outside the living room or in the living room um, and I took photos of the smartphone point and shoot and, the, and my R5. So the first one is with the smartphone. As you can see the smartphone it actually it, it has a very let's say wide um, depth of field meaning you can really see everything including the back as well so this one I I would say the only good thing with the smartphone is that it captured the color you would see the different tones uh, I think you might not uh, later you would see that there is this different tones uh, his pants and also his suit um, because in the later part you might see that how these tones are not seen in the photo so for this daylight setup you can easily see this one uh, even though if you're using a smartphone and even you can see the the, the correct colors of the skin tone and uh, I didn't do any photoshops on this one didn't do any changes the only problem with the smartphone is that if you blow this up it doesn't have that much detail it doesn't have the like, super detailed one crisp sharp because it's just a smartphone camera but the good thing is again the colors it really captured it the same also for the point and shoot you can actually see that it also did capture the the, the color tones including the skin tone even the gun you can see is really gray uh, the, the good thing about this one it has a good um, how would say the, the sharpness is really good uh, that's one thing uh, but the same as the mobile phone it also does distinguish the colors between the 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 shirt and the pants and also this one you can even more say that the 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 straps you, it also captured that col the colors of that one um, but either way I think it's in terms of colors it's the same as this mobile phone and also the point and shoot the only difference is more like the sharpness of the image 
As for the R5, which is a high-end camera, of course, it gets all of these colors, including the sharpness and including the separation of this subject from the background. So what it does is actually making you focus or the viewer focus on the piece itself and you really couldn't see some all the, the details at the back, but it's more or less focusing all the details and the piece itself. But do be careful because for this camera and the lens I use, the 85 1.2, it has a very uh, shallow depth of field. So what it does, it, it blurs the other details. So do be careful of that one. It doesn't mean it's not sharp. It doesn't mean it didn't get the details. It just depends on the aperture that I use. So take note also of this. So in terms of daylight, you've seen that all the cameras uh, was able to, to capture the color tones, the different colors. It was able to get that. The mobile phone might not get the super sharpness or the, the crisp colors or details as well but it did get the tones. The main idea is that with the daylight lighting in a proper setup uh, where it's also the daylight is not <laughs> like blowing light to the subject, it really does get the correct color tones um, if you have that kind of daylight setup and you even take photos of your smartphone, that could be enough. But you would see later how ambient light and smartphone doesn't really go well. For the ambient light, which is in the stage of collection room, um, I had the smartphone taken and as you can see it's not that good, it's not that pleasing, it's very dark, um, I, you cannot even see the different tones properly, uh, the skin tone is a bit dark, the, everything is almost basically dark so it's really not that good, you really need some kind of lighting but even later you will see that with, even with the light it somehow wasn't able to really get the correct tones of the color. The next one is the point and shoot. The point and shoot still had, was able to get some colors, but again, you, you'd see that it was not able to distinguish the colors between the, the, the shirt and also the, the pants. It, compared to the daylight setup, it was able to really distinguish the colors, the tones. You would really see that one, even the straps. For this one, since it's a bit darker and more moodier, it was not able to get that. Uh, it did somehow has uh, a bit of a sharpness, but still I would say didn't really get that color right. As for the high-end camera, the R5, even the R5, you would notice that it didn't even get, because it's dark, because it's really dark, it was not really able to distinguish properly. You At least when it's captured, it didn't get the colors right, so I tried to have the settings in this as much as I can, handheld, uh, just to make sure that I, I I would be able to really take photo properly. Um, so I did the best that I could. So this is a handheld one, and it really didn't get the correct colors. If I notch up more of the ISO, it would also blow up. So I, I stick to the settings. So yeah, this is the best that I could take considering the settings. So as you can see, if any setup is dark, um, no matter what, your photo, may, you may be using a mobile phone or a high-end camera. If there is no proper lighting, you wouldn't get the correct details. You may have some, uh, even for some cameras, not the super high-end, you may even have a hard time focusing. And what it might focus is that if you focus differently, and because it, it focuses normally to the to the lighter part if you set it in uh, in some kind of auto so it would focus differently and it will not focus the the things that you want to focus so it would be out of focus and it wouldn't be sharp so that would be a mess already so you do be careful with this kind of setups because they're a bit uh, misleading uh, as you can see even with the D, uh, with the mirrorless high end mirrorless camera it didn't able to get the colors that we wanted so with the lighting setup, I have an LED light uh, and as a key uh, as a key light, and there's a, like an another LED light at the back for the back lighting, uh, just to get the those nice lines. Uh, what happened is that the, the smartphone I, it kind of blew up, and I, it's a bit hard to control. Even if I move the, the exposure, it still isn't that good. I think if you want to have, I guess this is what I learned. If you want to have a proper photo. With light setup, I think you need to do a manual where you can really control the settings of your smartphone, control the, the shutter, ISO, and also the aperture 
to really get the proper uh, photo but for this one like ordinary the, the camera the, the typical camera app of the iPhone it really didn't get this it kind of blew up and I really don't like it it's even for me worse than the ambient one as for the point and shoot actually it turned out really amazing um, um with just with a photo shoot and with the correct lighting a proper lighting you can get a really nice photo out of it um it also able to distinguish the 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 tones of the the shirt and the pants the tones uh, the colors also of the straps the gun skin tone really good and it's also able to focus properly like i said i try to focus as much as i can and also as handheld as i can so this one turned out really good um, I don't have that much of a depth of field um, so I'm just using I think a 2.0 for this one and basically it was able to get this kind of photo which is actually pretty good pretty decent as for the high-end camera and the proper lighting definitely you get the sharpness that you want and also the separation of the subject that looks actually amazing but what is also very good is the uh, the color scheme or the colors the tones it really got those Beautifully as long as you have the proper lighting uh, Compared to the ambient light you know, how much good camera you have of course you have to notch up those uh, ISO when you're in ambient, but for this one I get the settings. I get it right This is the best I could get considering the handheld of course You don't have any problem because you get the lighting and to add it up. I had some it's like short photography with this one I try to have some moody shots because this piece is really awesome uh, I took some like different kinds of colors or ambient colors and blend it and also tried to bounce some light so it took this one I took this one uh, with a very nice bokeh at the back and it looks amazing look at that he's just so stunning with this kind of setup of lighting so the best takeaway for this experiment actually is that um, we shouldn't try to judge right away if we've seen some internet photos of the, some pieces because we really don't know how it's done how it's photographed sometimes just it might just be like the ambient lights or the the lights in the, in the cabinets which as you've seen doesn't really yield a very good picture or we couldn't really see the, the correct details the correct tones of the colors if it doesn't have a proper lighting one good example of a proper lighting uh, with the statues is like the photos from statue mania's barbara um, the gambit looks amazing compared to the photos and the xm website the one that she took looks beautiful it showcases all the details it justifies the somehow the price it's really good looking compared to the very dark looking uh, shadowy photos in XM Studios um, I, it, it is good um, I think the details in the photos in the XM is more on a higher or a lesser aperture high f-stop uh, but the ones that the, the from Barbara it looks just amazing it, it, with the close-up it also looks phenomenal you can really see the texture the colors of the coat and that was really good so, so I do hope also for the guys out there do take photos if you have uh, when you take photos have a very good lighting so that it can also help us on and really deciding to get some pieces with pre-orders of pieces and that would be very good and the other side or the flip side of it be careful also for the companies and their websites like Saicho Saicho has like very nice photos sometimes the photos are photoshopped or really nicely done in a certain environment which uh, we cannot see also the true colors of the photos so that's for me the best takeaway for this experiment so thank you for watching and I do hope that you stay tuned in Inchen's place